And thanks a lot for the organizing of the about how we have learned in round two. Can you hear me? I think I hear me quite well. We maybe we saw this. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna try. All right. So we're going uh how we have learned in round two about the Higgs boson, the one we found in round one uh, in round one. All right. So Cool, thanks. So here's the outline. So uh, we'll first introduce the experiments at the Large Hadron Collider. And, uh, and I will talk about how do we know now about this whole sound, which some biggest results, mostly from the Higgs Public, uh, Public Conference uh, last month. And it's a summary, short summary and outlook. So as you know, the uh, most of the results coming from the main two largest uh, general purpose experiments at the Large Hadron Collider. And in Taiwan, we have uh, the, uh, sorry, the, oops, how did I do? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, in Taiwan, we have the, oh, sorry, we, we have the, um, the Institute of, of uh, Physics from the Academia Sinica and here, National, National Tsinghua University, in the ACTUS collaboration, while uh, the teams from National Taiwan University and National Central University, uh, they are in the CMS collaboration. So in Taiwan, we are involved in both uh, ACTUS and CMS uh, experiments. And ACTUS stands for uh, toroidal LGC apparatus. Uh, this name comes from its giant, uh, toroidal magnets that's in the uh, bright yellow here in this cartoon of the uh, Atlas detector. And CNS is, oh, sorry, this is another picture for the Atlas detector showing you this uh, eight uh, coil of this uh, large toroidal magnets. And the CMS uh, stands for the compound muon solenoid because their uh, largest uh, so the largest magnet is uh, in the shape of solenoid. And uh, uh, for round two, uh, round two uh, last round 2015 to 2018, and we have proton proton collisions at the highest energy ever achieved in uh, colliders uh, of the 30 TeV. And this plot shows you the amount of the data accumulated during the uh, course of round two. So you see it's, uh, we start, sorry, we started, oops. Sorry. Thanks. Uh, we, uh, we started a bit slow, but we uh, gradually accumulated more and more data later and later in round two, and we accumulated, uh, at the end of the day, we accumulated about uh, 160 inverse spindle bond of data, which is more than six, six times uh, round one data collected. and. Uh, our detectors are also performing uh, very well. Here shows the uh, performance of Atlas and the uh, CNS uh, in the course of round two. And uh, basically, this is uh, this plot shows you like how much data delivers versus how much data successfully recorded. So um, across all the uh, 160 uh, inverse length of our data delivered, uh, the detector performed very well, almost like 95% uh, of, of the time we have uh, recorded good Good for physics data. So, yeah, at the end of the day, we have about 140 inverse, 40 inverse sample bound good for physics data uh, from Atlas and CMS each. And one of the biggest challenge for experimentalists in round two is that we have uh, enormous events for pi up. These are simultaneous additional soft collisions on top of the hard scattering. So this plot uh, on the left shows you a typical Z to two muon event, the cleanest signal you can think of from uh, proton-proton collision. And the two muons from is, uh, uh, is highlighted by the two uh, red lines here. 
But even for such a simple clean event, it comes with about 25 additional uh, reconstruction, uh, reconstructive vertices. And this is the uh, uh, right hand side, I show the uh, number of uh, average number of the interaction per branch crossing. So it gets higher and higher when we increase the central mass energy. And this uh, additional uh, interaction results in soft, soft jet, what we call pile up. And that will uh, make our jet energy resolution uh, worse. And uh, that will give us additional jets that on top of our hard scattering jets. So we need to figure out how we can uh, mitigate the effects from pile up. So I give you two examples. There are many ways. Uh, just This is just two examples of what uh, we have done. So for example, in Atlas on the left-hand side, we applied a multivariate algorithm called uh, Jet Vertex Tagger, which make use of the information from the tracker and the parameters and to, uh, to distinguish jets from harsh scattering and pile up. And you can see uh, what, uh, we can, you can see the number of jets as a function of the number of uh, average number of interaction per interaction per branch crossing. Uh, with the, we, we saw this cut that's in blue and with the cut that's in red. So you can see with the cut using this jet vertex pattern, uh, the performance of jets is more robust against the number of interactions. And uh, on the right hand side is uh, what CNS has done. CNS has uh, exploited uh, uh, what they call, uh, I think, puppy color per particle identification weights. This is uh, a method to weight the charge and the neutral constituents of a jet according to their probability from a hard scattering vertex to a soft scattering, um, like the pile up vertex. And again, uh, I show you the uh, their performance in missing ET uh, as a function of number of vertices. And uh, uh, just as in the case for Atlas, uh, once we uh, apply these puppy weights, the match performance is also more stable uh, against pile up, against the number of vertices. All right, so how do we know about the uh, Higgs? So we know that uh, there are four major uh, mechanisms for Higgs production uh, at proton-proton uh, collider. Uh, the largest one being the gluon gluon uh, fusion, uh, about, about 85 to 90% of the time. And then followed by the uh, DVF production and, uh, and VH. And then the TTH is about 100% uh, uh, for 125 uh, Higgs in collider. And the bottom line is uh, all these, all four major production mechanisms have been confirmed with round one plus round two data from the Large Hadron Collider. All right. And about Higgs decay, so this is the this pie chart shows you the branching ratio for different decay channels uh, for 125 GeV Higgs. And again, with round one, round two data, uh, we have well, we have observation for how we call the big five. This uh, five channel Higgs to BB, Higgs to WW, uh, leptonic, uh, Higgs to tau tau, Higgs to ZD to four lepton, and Higgs to dipolar. Uh, these five channels have uh, pretty well established uh, with round one and round two data. And what's new with uh, the analy analysis with four round two data is that uh, we start to get sensitivity with some of the smaller, rare, uh, or more difficult uh, observation for uh, or more difficult channels. For example, um, for his to mu mu, for his coupling to second generation fermions, we start to reach the three sigma evidence. Uh, this is a result from CMS. Uh, this is uh, the dimuon invariant mass, uh, dimuon invariant mass of, from, uh, uh, with four round two data from CMS. And you can hardly see from this linear scale, but any uh, linear from the uh, bottom figure is, is data minus the predictive background. You see a small peak around 125 GeV, uh, 125 GeV, and that translates into uh, three sigma observation, three sigma evidence, not observation, three sigma evidence for this to be used uh, from the CMS. And after we have seen the result, uh, this graph from observed data would be like three sigma, uh, three sigma axis around 125 GeV. And I want to give you another, uh, two other examples with uh, four rounds of data. First of all, 
uh, I want to uh, show you that uh, we are now able to uh, observe the Higgs production and the Higgs uh, signal from the smallest production mechanism, the GH, and one of, one of the small, uh, one of the say, small, uh, smaller decay branching radio that is that So this is the uh, uh, Dihota analysis with TTH, uh, product, uh, TTH production mechanism from the atlas with four rounds of data. And here it clearly shows you, uh, we can see a clear peak around 125 GeV uh, in the Dihota uh, invariant mass. And uh, later we have reached the five sigma uh, observation uh, with atlas data and uh, with atlas rounding data. And uh, uh, another example is we are not able to tackle an uh, analysis which used to uh, we used to think is uh, very unlikely or uh, if not impossible to do with photon-photon uh, uh, collision. For example, the uh, vector boson uh, production channel with the uh, Higgs to dB. And this is again like atlas results with four round two data, and uh, we have achieved uh, three sigma evidence uh, in this very challenging uh, channel because of the jet and all the backgrounds. Right. And we can combine all these measurements for his couplings to standard model and see if they are consistent with standard model predictions. For example, uh, we can compare the uh, measurement of the GGF cross-section versus the VBF cross-section from different decay channels and see they are pretty consistent with each other and also consistent with the standard model. This is a standard model predictions, the little red cross over here. And we can also uh, decompose this result into different uh, production mechanisms and compare that, uh, compare the, uh, the measured cross-section with uh, normalized to a standard model, standard model uh, value. So one means uh, consistent with standard model. And I think so far, uh, all measurements are uh, in agreement with standard model, uh, we think uncertainties. And you probably cannot see it very clear from, from where you sit, but uh, here, uh, here around this one, line, red line, there are this little gray area showing you the theory uncertainties uh, for the standard model cross-section calculations. And you can see that for ground to ground fusion, we start to be comparable, the experimental uncertainties start to be comparable to, uh, compa uh, to be comparable in size uh, with the theory uncertainties. Uh, this is a similar plus from CMS, uh, again, uh, uh, this is uh, this new value means the ratio between the uh, measured cross section and the standard model prediction, and so around one means uh, consistent with standard model for different production and the decay channels. And the conclusion is the same. Like uh, so far, all the uh, Higgs coupling measurements with the standard model particles are pretty consistent with the standard model prediction. And uh, here's another way to see how we uh, how uh, what we have achieved in experiment. So the left hand side shows the uh, couple, the measured couplings to the standard model particle as a function of particle mass. And the right hand side uh, shows you how we reinterpret our result in this so-called Kappa framework. Basically the deviation from the standard model prediction uh, for, for example, for the couplings to uh, vector boson versus uh, fermions on the y axis. And from the left hand side, we see that uh, we, are cons the, uh, we are consistent with the cinema prediction across uh, about three orders of magnitudes from the muons to the uh, top. And from the right hand side, again, the couplings to the vector boson and the fermions are pretty consistent with the cinema model predictions. Uh, we can also, what else can we do? We can also measure the differential cross sections because uh, by looking at the shapes of the uh, cross sections or distributions in different kinematic things, uh, we might be able to have some uh, sensitivity in the the model signatures. And this is uh, the latest result from the Higgs to four lepton channel from Atlas. Uh, in terms of the PT of the four lepton, or basically the PT of the Higgs, and the eta of the four, the, uh, four leptons. 
and uh, the black dots are the data, and uh, the uh, other colorful dots are the theory predictions. So again, uh, at least within uncertainties, uh, the uh, differential cross section also look uh, well in, uh, in agreement with the uh, standard model prediction within uh, uncertainties. All right. So uh, we also uh, translate this data into what we call the simplified template cross sections. Uh, this is this means we measure the Higgs uh, cross section time branching ratio in phase space. In phase space, it's exclusive for different things. Uh, it's important to maximize the contribution uh, or sensitivity to, the, uh, beyond, to any possible beyond cinema signatures. And we also make the combination across the panel. Easier. And this is now a new standard to communicate our measurements to the phenomenologists. And the uh, things are decomposed into a, a kind of like complicated big chart like this. But basically, uh, for production from TGF and the BDF and VH, uh, we decompose the phase space into the number of things and the degree of the Higgs. And for the higher PT, uh, for the high PT Higgs things, uh, they are more sensitive to measure the number of effects. So we can translate our measurements according to this uh, thinning as long tables like this. You can read you can really read it, but the bottom line is uh, right now uh, all of, all the measurements in the thing uh, each things of the STS cross uh, simplified template cross sessions are again still well within uh, the uh, standard model uh, well within uh, the predictions from the standard model. And uh, so far we are still limited by uh, statistical uncertainties or in other words statistical uncertainties are still the dominant uncertainties in this simplified template cross section measurements. Okay, so how about other properties of the Higgs boson? For example, the Higgs max uh, seems pretty well known, but still want to show you the latest results from Atlas uh, for the Higgs to four lepton channel. So this is the uh, uh, four lepton invariant mass zooming near the 125 Higgs, uh, Higgs mass window, and the results is 124.92 uh, GeV. And this is table shows you some like the evolution of the Higgs boson mass measurements across time and across different uh, collaborations. But more or less, we are very uh, we're flipping around one. Uh, we're jumping around the 125 GV the value that is now uh, commonly quotes, and we start to uh, get more and more uh, say sensitive. Like start to shrink the. Uh, error bars uh, to down to, I think that's about uh, like 1% ish. All right, we can also the uh, we can also try to extract the width of the Higgs boson from the current data. Uh, we we do that by taking the ratio of on-shell and off-shell signal strengths in Higgs to four uh, in Higgs to ZZ decays, uh, because by taking the ratios we can get rid of some common uncertainties, and the on-shell Higgs decays are sensitive to the uh, are sensitive to the uh, the width, the gamma edge of the Higgs boson, and if we somehow get a larger width. Uh, Compared to the standard model prediction, that may indicate, uh, say, the cinema model decays, that his his decay to invisible, say, dark matter candidates, uh, or new resonances, or anomalous his to uh, vector boson couplings. And this is uh, our current uh, current result with partial data from uh, round two, uh, from the Atlas and the CMS experiments. And uh, so far, we are able to put, uh, say, upper limit on the uh, Higgs width about uh, 13, 14 MBV. And uh, for CMS, uh, they can claim the uh, exclusion or uh, the allowed region with both lower and upper limit about uh, 0.08 to uh, about 10 ish MBV. Uh, we can also test the CT properties of Higgs boson because we know from the standard model Higgs, Higgs boson should be a spin zero scalar. And 
with round one results, we have excluded basically spin one, spin two hypothesis. So focusing on uh, uh, the scalar versus pseudo scalar hypothesis with uh, round two data. And here uh, there are two examples uh, from the four round two data from status and CNS. So uh, basically both analysis uh, characterize the CPR component with something also like looks like the compact framework. So the uh, argument of the uh, the uh, CP up or CP even will translate into some uh, angle phi. And in actors, this is a plot shows you the uh, cosine, we call that alpha uh, in our publication. Uh, so cosine alpha means the CP even component and the sine alpha means the CP up component with the TTH to that photon channel. And, uh, for CMS, uh, they look at the uh, Higgs to tau tau analysis, and the uh, CP violation effect will, uh, they call that, so they call it CP violation effect uh, in the parameter called phi tau tau, and they, plot, and they uh, express their results in the measurement of what, we, what they call the phi CP. This is the angle between the decay, uh, the plan of the decay products from the tau's. And nevertheless, the, uh, the uh, the bottom line is for Atlas and CMS, uh, we have placed, uh, we, the results are consistent with standard model prediction with also the pure CP even uh, Higgs boson. And the, uh, the maximum CP violation or the pure CP arc hypothesis has excluded about, uh, has, has been excluded at the uh, significance of, uh, I think for Atlas three and for CMS, Higgs to tau has about 3.9. Uh, sigma for maximum CP uh, up, uh, case. All right, so we also want to see how, what can we say about the Higgs couplings because uh, all the reasons that why we say Higgs, uh, boson, Higgs field brings uh, the uh, mass for uh, gauge bosons uh, comes from its shape this Mexican cat-like shape of the Higgs potential. And, and we don't know why it looks like that. And we, are, uh, we don't have direct evidence uh, yet to verify whether or not the Higgs potential really looks like that. In order to probe the shape of the Higgs potential, we need to look at the Higgs self-couplings. And again, we parametrize the measurement of the Higgs self-couplings in the Kappa framework to distinct to uh, as a uh, indication of the deviation from standard model. So we we'll call that kappa lambda to, for this uh, lambda parameters. And again, we have productions in the GTF and the VBA channel. Uh, for VBA channel, it also sensitive to the Higgs coupling to uh, two uh, vector bosons called kappa 2V. And this is uh, the, branching, the branching ratio of the uh, different uh, final states of the dihex decays. And the bottom line is uh, the dihex production measurement is most feasible with at least one of the Higgs boson decays uh, to the two Bs, BB quad, BB bar. So right now with uh, partial round two data, we have placed uh, limits, uh, uh, upper limits on the cross-section cross times branch ratio for various final states of the dynamic decay from Atlas and CMS. So that translates, to, translates into the uh, upper limits on the uh, cross sessions for uh, dihex productions from Atlas and CMS. So it's, we place limits about from something like uh, seven to about 20. And that will uh, also translate into regions of the loud kappa lambda. Uh, from these two uh, collaborations. So this is uh, from Atlas and CMS, and the red line here is the theory, uh, is the theory prediction. And uh, the other lines are the uh, expected and observed uh, a lot of regions from the experiments. So for both, uh, so for Atlas, uh, the allowed region right now is about uh, minus five to 12 for Kappa Lambda. And for CMS, it's about um, minus, 10 to, minus 10 to 20 ish. And we just have, uh, oh, we also have results uh, combining uh, single Higgs and the di Higgs production because for the next living order uh, or one loop level single Higgs production, it can also be, it can also sensitive to the uh, 
lambda parameters, uh, this lambda parameter of the uh, or the Higgs triple coupling, Higgs quartic coupling. All right. So combining uh, Higgs and di-Higgs uh, production uh, with partial round two data, we uh, we can also place uh, like a limit or our allowed regions of the uh, kappa lambda. And with some assumptions, for example, this class we assumed all the kappa uh, parameters for our couplings like vector boson and fermions are equal to one, meaning consistent with standard model prediction. And for and then place limits on kappa lambda, it's about uh, it's still consistent with the standard model prediction given the uh, uh, even the large uncertainties here, but that's what we can do uh, to uh, even probe the Higgs self-coupling. And right now we have uh, two results from uh, Atlas and CMS. Uh, that's the uh, Dihigs analysis with four round two data. So for uh, CMS is uh, Higgs to BB and the four leptons. And for Atlas is uh, four B channel. So for Higgs, uh, for CMS is Higgs to BB and four leptons. Uh, the, uh, the, this is a first search in this final state and the limit is about minus 10 to 14. And for Atlas it's uh, also a first uh, search uh, in, this, in this final state and that can put constraint not only on kappa lambda but also on this kappa 2v from point uh, from minus point uh, uh, about minus point eight to uh, two point nine. So uh, we can also make use of the Higgs boson as a proto to new physics. So we can, uh, since we found it, uh, that provides us another tool to see uh, if, uh, if we can find uh, beyond standard model signatures or hidden sectors because they may talk to Higgs bosons, uh, talk to standard model through Higgs boson. So, for example, we can uh, search for dark matter produced uh, in association with a Higgs boson because dark matter are basically invisible to our detectors because they do not interact with ordinary materials. So they look like missing energies in our uh, experiments. So uh, in order to, uh, in order to uh, search for dark matter, we need to, uh, we need to uh, find it in association with uh, non-visible particles uh, such as uh, jets or gluons or Higgs. And, this kind of signature we call that mono something, mono X, uh, could be mono Higgs or mono jet or mono whatever, uh, uh, to indicate the visible the visible uh, particle we know that can provide as a handle by this uh, dark matter signature with large And for uh, Atlas and CMS, we have a, a rich program searching for mono Higgs. Uh, sorry, model X and also model Higgs. So one example, uh, the latest result from Atlas is the model Higgs to die photon channel uh, with four round two data. So uh, the left hand side shows you the die photon invariant mass uh, compared to the standard model background. And uh, it's quite difficult to see, but there's a light green bulb, uh, light green line here uh, showing you the standard model predictions uh, of the uh, Higgs boson. And uh, uh, and and the button shows you the data minus all these expected say, backgrounds compared to uh, uh, compared to uh, the ex uh, compared to observed data. So basically, it's uh, consistent with zero, meaning uh, we don't see any uh, evidence yet for uh, standard model or for dark matter candidates in this channel. So we can place limit on the, uh, for example, the dark matter mass m chi here. And compare and compare that to uh, direct search measurements such as star side or Xena. And another way to search for dark matter with uh, another way to search for dark matter with uh, Higgs boson involved is to see whether or not Higgs decays to invisible particles and. Uh, we can do that in the, uh, for example, in the VBF channel. So it's VBF is to, is that like someone's microphone on Zoom or? All right. <laughs> anyway, 
So uh, we can do that in the VTH channel or in the TTH, TTH uh, production channel. So here shows you uh, the upper limits from uh, TTH was run to VTH is run to and from five to And again, we can translate the Yeah, that's the usual trick for debugging, right? You start with in public. That's the usual trick for debugging. Start with read all things one by one. Oh, we still have one here. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, again, uh, we can translate the upper limits of these cross sessions into uh, exclusion limits of the uh, dumb matter or the weak max and the uh, is cross sections of the weak interactions, uh, or weak interaction with uh, nucleus, and put it on the same graph so we can compare to uh, direct search as uh, Z9 and Lux. And uh, here, the uh, results from Atlas are these uh, two lines in uh, two patch lines in blue and uh, red. The blue and red is uh, we can incur interpret our results uh, in different scenarios, whether the uh, sound method is a scalar or a marijuana uh, wing, this is the right line. So compare that with um, all the other direct search uh, in this uh, dotted line here. So you can see that uh, the searches for sound method from collider is, uh, is uh, uh, comparable and the uh, provides like additional checks on top of the uh, direct search. All right, so where are we are now? Uh, so we are right now in this how we call, so after round we are right now in this how we call the long shutdown two uh, from 2019 up to now. Uh, unfortunately, it's, uh, it's prolonged due to the delay caused by the uh, COVID-19. Uh, but nevertheless, we hope we can restart round three in 2012, uh, sorry, in 2012. 2022, and then uh, and then move on to uh, the next uh, major upgrade, uh, how we call the phase two upgrade, so that we can upgrade the machine to uh, what's so called the high luminosity LHC or HL LHC uh, that uh, aims to provide uh, ten times about ten times more luminosity uh, at 14 keV uh, later, say past in in a few years. So one thing we so one thing we can uh, we are able we may be able to check with uh, high luminosity LHC is for example we make such a here uh, four sigma uh, four to five sigma sensitivities for the uh, uh, pixel couplings. So this is a plot shows you the expected performance or the projected performance of the. Uh, that keep search uh, in different channels and combine and also combine at the same CMS data and assuming 3,000 image sample box. And uh, so here shows the combined uh, sensitivity or combined, combined allow region of this Kaka lambda. So we may start to uh, start again uh, four sigma sensitivity with uh, 3,000 image sample box data from uh, high luminosity LHC with Atlas and CMS combined. So that brings me to my summary. So the Higgs boson is uh, still like, it's still a benchmark analysis in round two because uh, we can probe new physics uh, through the precision measurements of Higgs boson, the measurements through couplings and widths and uh, uh, masses also. Or use it as a new candle for exact signals like searches for dark matter. And for our goals for the next round, for round three and with uh, high luminosity LHC, uh, we can start to have uh, sensitivities in, for example, couplings to second generation fermions like H2 mu mu, H2 cc, the C class, 
uh, or where it pays taxes to the gamma. Right now we have about like two sigma sensitivity, uh, two sigma sensitivity or observation with Higgs to the gamma. And Higgs self couplings and uh, Higgs and also uh, probing further with the Higgs width and more. So, uh, and we're not at the point where input and ideas from the theory side will make uh, to do this for long three and the high LHC longer and richer. And thanks a lot. In, uh, in one of the talks that you showed the four charge back on very mass, mm -hmm. I see there's some excess around 700 GDB. I have, I mean, okay, let me check. Oh. Yep, uh, where you de try to determine the width of X bottom. Right. I see there's some kind of excess around 600 to 800 GDB. So, yeah, oh. yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's this one, you can see, wow. Well, uh, it looks like a a few events. So you can see the error bar is still be like the yeah. it's like one plus minus one events. And the oh, ten, ten events. Like, or 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 ten events. But nevertheless the error bar is the yeah, error is pretty really large. Mm -hmm. And this is with just uh I think the first two years of Rocky Day Panel. So I think we're now working on uh with the we are now working on the result with uh with with four ranking data so we can see if the assets persist. Yeah, I think because log 600 GGB, you have some kind of control that is very mm -hmm. kind of, mm -hmm. uh, consistent, but between 600 to 700, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, something we can pay attention to with when the results come to four round, yes. In, in the government of laws, um, mm -hmm. can you mention this? Yes, uh, 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 the last method is Which one? This one. This one, okay. Yeah, so this is actually quite interesting because if you go to like it up, my pronouncers compared to conventional searches, right? Mm -hmm. But how far can you go down? Because that looks like, especially for the grand money, you can go down to the yeah. very light like amount. But there might be some limit. We must go up again at some point, no? Sure. When will the event up? Ah, good point. Uh, are we going to go up at some point? Okay, just keep on going because then you should make sense to stop. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know, please. For example, like a scalar, okay. the, if the coffin doesn't become a master, you go for all, all the way because it's just uh, missing energy. Right, but for the Majorana, I think if the, if the coupling of the Higgs couples the Majorana behind on the mass, then it might be a big problem. But why is the Majorana stronger than the data? I think they are not. So it might be just the coupling doesn't depend on, on the mass. But, well, LHC is good for the, the case that it becomes strong. Um, doesn't depend on, on the mass where it works. Yeah, 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 of course. Zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, principle they can go to zero. Okay. Well, actually, maybe just because of the analysis of the count, assuming there's a lot of doesn't become bad. I don't need to say maybe it's a different value. I think it is assuming in the case. In the IHEX, mm -hmm. let me when you combine all the channels. Uh -huh. okay. yeah. The analysis is about this is a prediction, right? That means so, the, uh, 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 it kind of this um, sort of is it using all the machine learning method to make the limit like that? Uh, yes, I think I think for that research we use uh, we use very kind of machine learning or multivariate analysis, like using these neural network. So, at, or in a sense, we have to, uh, because it's a like very challenging and uh, at least with the current data set. Mm -hmm. one on, um, so, for the next to that gamma, what is this prospect if uh, what is this? Uh, it's perfect in round three. Uh, one, two. Uh, yeah. 
I think we should be able to say have evidence or even discovery because this is our current status with this G gamma uh, with four rounds of data. And we're now uh, seeing something like two sigma. And uh, so for round three, uh, this, this, this analysis is definitely limited by the data. So for round three, I think at least we should be able to do three sigma evidence and with combination others and PMS. I think we should be able to adapt the signals. Round two plus round three data. Mm -hmm. Three sigma. Uh, it's, uh, it's really, I, I cannot do it. It's probably out of my head, but I think uh, I think three sigma is uh, doable and five sigma is possible. Any others? If not, that, uh, thanks all the speakers. Uh,